Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video and in this video I want to talk to you a little bit about dismissive avoidance and even fearful avoidance for that matter but with a large focus on dismissive avoidance and um, understanding like how they show their feelings, how to know like what they're feeling, how to understand their internal experience of feelings when it comes to relationships and romance. Okay. So before I dive into all of this, um, we're still doing a sale to support our community right now. There's a coupon code for 25% off membership bundles. I'll put it in the description box below as well as a, as a card on this video. Um, and the coupon code is with you all one word, um, to join the all access membership. So it's like all the courses, all the webinars, ongoing four live webinars a week, our community, um, our, our Discord channel, um, all these different things that we're offering inside of the school. There's like so many things I could name now because we keep growing everything. Um, a collaboration collection, courses from other individuals that are coming and all these different exciting things. So um, let's talk about this specifically. So one thing that I really want to get across in this video is that every single person is giving and receiving love through um, like themselves, through who they are, but it's in competition with their fears and their beliefs about what love is and what it means. So it's like the interest and the attraction they feel in competition with um, what fears they have about romance, about relationships, about connection, about you, about men, women, whatever stories they are carrying at a subconscious level because of pre-programming due to past experiences that have imprinted the subconscious mind. And those things are basically in competition. And so that's what I want you to recognize. Okay. So often for the dismissive avoidant, what we'll see is dismissive avoidance can be very interested in people and they can experience a lot of infatuation truly though from the outside perspective, it might look otherwise. They can experience a, a tremendous amount of infatuation, but if somebody is interested in you a nine out of 10, but their fears about relationships and vulnerability and commitment and emotional safety and sharing and all these different things, if those fears are accumulating because of all the painful imprints of past experiences to become like a negative eight, and then even if they like you as a positive nine or interested positive nine, you are seeing it come across and you are experiencing the relationship as if the person sort of likes you like a one out of 10, nine minus eight, right? So, so that's what I want everybody to be aware of. There's like a net output and that's what you see. That's what you experience in a relationship. And so it's really important that if you notice that, okay, maybe somebody's expressed a lot of feelings in relationships, and, and this is the same for fearful avoidance, so it tends to take place in a separate form, like around a fear of more extreme commitment. I'll put that in the next video, um, and, and they'll talk to you a little bit about that. But um, for, for dismissives, like as soon as they're, they enter past the dating phase, they start to get into the honeymoon phase, that's when we'll start to see um, and especially in the power struggle phase, that's when we'll start to really see um, the fears that they have, the programs coming up. So you can think of like the dating and honeymoon phase as being characterized by having like elevated, first of all, the dating phase, like there just aren't fears because there isn't commitment and seriousness yet. The moment there is, then it's considered the honeymoon phase. And in that phase, are, there are usually elevated neurochemicals of oxytocin, phenylethylalamine, like things that basically are, are acting to a certain degree like alcohol, right? Like lowering inhibitions, um, making you show up as your sort of more fearless, vulnerable selves. And then when that neurochemistry starts to sort of, when there's a, an adaptability, because humans are very adaptable and eventually they get used to those feelings and experiences and the neurochemistry sort of dies down a little bit to a, to a, or as a result, then what you see is all of the fear starting to show up. And you can think of it almost as like somebody who seems like they have liquid courage from drinking and then the alcohol wears off and all of a sudden the, their inhibitions start showing up. And that's kind of like the experience of a dismissive avoidant as they go through the different stages of a relationship. And so what you want to recognize is that what you're often experiencing is that person um, you know, 
being interested, but then that's that those needs that they're and and they have from you and from the relationship, those needs are in competition with their fears. And it's almost like an equation. Like you can be like needs or attraction, whatever you want to call it, minus fears equals the the net output of demonstrated interest in a relationship. And so it's really important that you, if you are the dismissive avoidant, first recognize that and ask yourself, like, what is what does it cost me to live like this? What does it cost me to want things but never fully give myself permission to do the necessary work that it takes in order to get those things fully, in order to experience love fully, connection fully, in order to feel like I can set my boundaries as a dismissive avoidant so that I can be somebody who you know, advocates for my time alone and needs some of that, but also um, can communicate fearlessly so that I can give and receive in relationships and feel like this isn't just, I'm not allowed to have needs. It's unsafe to have needs from others. It's not appropriate. I don't want to rely on anybody. And then feel like you go into relationships and you can only meet the other person's needs because you refuse to allow yourself to get your needs met. Then there's no equal exchange. Then relationships eventually become tiring, exhausting. So it's really important to recognize that first and foremost. Okay. If you're the partner of a dismissive avoidant and you're getting like a net two or a net three or whatever output from the attraction minus the um the attraction minus the fears, then um, you have to ask yourself too, is this fair for me? Like, is this output okay? And if if not, then I have to communicate what I need. You know, I need you to work on this. I need you to change this. I need you to show up in this way. This is really important to me. Are you willing to do the work? And that actually helps somebody who is dismissive avoiding because they get to see and assess what's alive inside of them. So either way, like communication with self, if you are the DA or communication to the DA must happen in order for transformation to occur. Otherwise, both people are just going to become resentful and the relationship's not going to work anyways, quite honestly. So this stuff becomes solved when communicated about and then worked on. And if you're the dismissive and you're like, how do I do the work? Um, well, first of all, we have like intense next level sort of um, dismissal avoiding courses inside of the school that are going to teach you all about reprogramming all the necessary steps, workbooks, everything. But if you're sitting here and you're like, okay, I'm not going to join the school yet. Um, what do I start by doing? You want to know what that stuff is. What are my fears? We can't just say we have a, a fear. That doesn't help us with anything. We have to isolate. My fears are about relationships, about commitment, about men or women or vulnerability, like usually in, for DAs, it's, it's under one of those main categories. And you want to be able to go like, these are the fears. And then you have to work to reprogram those fears. And that can be done through repeated opposing action that you would normally take and, and basically a form of exposure work you would do. That can be done through repetition and emotion by telling yourself a new story about like, if you believe, for example, all people will leave. So there's no point in being vulnerable then you know you might really buy into that story you might interact with the world through that lens through that framework but that's not everybody's reality and that does not have to be your reality that only becomes your reality when you automatically believe that and so your actions follow that then you don't fully invest in relationships and you don't open up and then you get to a point where the relationship becomes rocky because people notice or see that and then all of a sudden the relationships are less likely to work out or maybe then there's fighting and chaos and it doesn't feel good and you leave. And so you have to recognize if there's fears that you have, every fear that we carry at a subconscious level is on its way for any attachment style in any individual. It's on its way to becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. So we have to isolate those fears, do reprogramming work around them and give ourselves full permission um, to live lives that we want to live, to go in the direction of what we want to create and to feel safe and empowered to do so. So I hope that all makes sense. Um, I thought it was a really important topic for today. It comes up a lot, comes up a lot in the webinars inside the school. And um, I just wanted to give some time to chat about it. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're getting a lot of value out of this channel. And I will see you in the next video.